Dear friends and loved ones, a very good morning to you all. Today is another day the Lord God has made it possible as usual. Your Oman Nogun Bosheva. I've come on you once again to dine with you with the word of God. So let's go straight to prayer, then we continue our divine word of God. Father, we humble come at our life into the precious blood of Jesus, Spirit of the Living God, take hold and take control of us. Grant us the power, the wisdom, the understanding that we will be able to be word abiding so that when divine call reaches us, we will not waste our time on earth, but our time on earth will be a profitable unto our soul. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth name. Amen. Amen, my dear friends. A big God bless you to this in English hour that I present to you the pure truth, the word of God as pure as it is. My name is called Don Kumi Bosheba. I am a messenger or a servant of God with the word of God. I come for us to have a chat to think about our souls. Mostly we that call ourselves Christian. And I come also in reminding of those who, because of some people, they are not serving God or they they take their Christianity life anyhow. I come as a lamb to waken those who are in Christianity, those who are still sleeping, to wake up, and those who, because of one or two things, they have fallen out of the grace or they are, they are backslid, for them to stand up and meet up to the standard or to meet up to the reason why God brought us onto this earth. May God bless you once again. And let's continue. Today, what are we talking about today? We are talking about when, if you could see, it is written that the do it right or this is the right time. And you could see the other side is also written, don't waste your time on earth. So why is it? Why is that? Because we are living on this earth under time. Everything we are doing is going with time. So a time is coming when there is a time, when they give you a time, especially, let me just speak it this way, those who have been to universities, we have, you have time to occupy the school. You have time to, it depends on the kinds of courses in which you are doing. Let's assume you are doing a doctorate, a doctrine or something. It will take like seven years. That's what we hear from outside. And uh, those who are doing the accounting and other things, I think it's four years course. So all these four years, the time, the period of four years, the school authorities will give it to you to occupy the school for good years or five or six, seven good years. But when the time arrives for your for you to go, they make sure that you don't stay in the premises by the put you out because the time given to you is four years or seven years or it doesn't matter. Physically, if your time is being wasted on education side or any place at all, if you still have the strength, you can still meet up and turn things around. That is physical time, which is okay. But what I'm talking about with you or what I'm just diving in with you we are diving into spiritual time which come with death death is something inevitable that no man can do anything about it there is no medicine or there is no direction to avert man from death it doesn't matter any prophet or whatever that can prophesy upon you i could see whatever whatever there is a time that you will still die nobody born by a woman that has visited this earth will not see death. Whatever happened, you will see death. Yes, we remember and heard of that according to Bible, Bible said in the olden days, two people were vanished. But one came, uh, three people. That was Enoch, um, uh, how do you call it? Enoch and uh, Elisha, which was also the Spirit of God took him away. And there came also another man who was the oldest man on earth. The Bible said he grew to a stand that nobody could even, he, he could not do anything that he fly away. All right. But we heard it in time that Elijah came in the days of John the Baptist and he came to die. Jesus Christ himself, the Messiah also, who has the power over everything, he tasted death and there is no one who will not die. 
everybody will die we are all about and we are all going when they give birth to you that is the next option that you need to know that you are going to die so this is what we are talking about we are not talking about the physical time the physical time can things can still be turned around but we are talking about the spiritual time when it's good with the soul when the time of the soul arrived according to what the bible declares in hebrews 9 27 the bible declares that god has set appointed time for the soul in which the soul cannot do anything about it. When the time arrived, you, you and I have no power anymore. That is why it refers unto what in the book of Job chapter 14. When you come down, what's to attend the verse 5? Bible declares that our seconds, minutes, days, weeks, months, years that we will spend on earth, God has set a bridge or a wall or he has set something across it. There is a line drawn for it. And the Bible declares that when we come or confront that deadline, there is nothing we can turn it around. The next thing that we need to do, we need to face death. And when we are dead and gone, it is not it is not gone. We have not physically, the body has gone back to that's where it came from. According to Ecclesiastes, Verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 7, Bible declares the body, the dust, will go to dust where it came from, and the spirit will go to God who gave us. Dear friends and loved ones, I am in for you to remind you, let us not waste our time on earth. Because whatever we are yielding our body to do on earth, the most painful thing is that the body has nothing nothing accountable there's no accountability for the body because body was taken from the dust so dust is everything but the soul that was given that the body came as a cloth to cover it is the one that's the problem that we will meet god and when we meet god we will give account of what the body did is what the soul is going to benefit either pain or joy let me just remind you according to what we are learning today we are learning about right time that we, this is the right time the right time is at this moment that you are alive that we must do what is right jesus christ said according to john chapter 9 let's go when we go down to the verse chapter 4 bible declares that the, the jesus was with his disciples so they came to a point where they were passing through and they saw a blind man who was sitting on the roadside and bible said the disciple confronted jesus and asked him and said rabbi so whose sin has caused this young man to be a blind man from his mother's womb and bible said jesus turned unto them and said unto them it is not neither the mother's sin or the child who was in the womb. Even the child in the womb, no, no sin. It's an innocent soul that he has no sin. And then he said, he said, the reason why all this thing happened is that these are the works of your father. That when things happen like this, then it is the duty of the Christian or the apostle, the men of God, to heal them for God's glory. So we are not talking about the glory of God today. But when you go to the verse number 4, and that is what I'm picking something from there for us to stand on to talk about it. Bible said Jesus make a declaration or emphasize a word that he said, As long as it's daytime, I must do the work who sent me. For there is night coming of which no man can work. And I am not talking about, Jesus was not talking about the night of our normal, uh, normal night hours in which today we are in the morning, later we are going in the afternoon, then we'll be in the evening, then it will be in the night. Jesus wasn't talking about this physical night. He was talking about that when we are alive, that we can turn things around, that is the daytime. And he said we need to do the work, the Father's work. That is why I said, this is the right time when you are alive, when I am alive, we have the right time. Let us do what is right, what is good. 
Let us not joke and think that we have the time of ourselves. We need to remember we are not those who control time. Time is being controlled by God and is being ruled by God. God has set time as he has set day and night that they rotate when the hour comes for the night to give over to the day. They don't argue about it. Night will just give the hour to day and day will rule. So when the hour comes for the day also to give the power to night to rule, the day does not argue with the night. He just hand over to the night. So I am pleading unto each and every soul that is listening, that will listen. The dear friends and loved ones, we are living with time, and the time we are living does not belong to us. It is somebody that owns this time. That is God Almighty. He is the one that owns it, and he is the one that has designed it. The way in which he has designed it, no man can change it. God, so I am pleading to us, let us be great and be serious with our time let us do the right thing and for this is the right time this is the time that you are alive that you can do what is good let us not think that tomorrow belongs to us we are only living by the mercies of god it is by the mercies of god that this minute or even or the hour or the day will be accomplished and we are still alive many of our fathers brothers has gone it is not because of fault that they are dead. Many of us alive have even done some things wrong more than them. Because there are some people, some innocent children, who doesn't even know what caused sin. But they, they perish. And there are people, big men, women, who are into occultism. Who are killing people, using blood of people, chanting, causing harm onto society. These ones are alive. What it is, it is all about the time. God has given us all time. When, that's what I quoted for you. According to Hebrews 9.27, the Bible declares that it is appointed unto man. So each man is living under appointed time. So if your time has not come, it based on the, the time, the appointed in which was given to you. Your time, the duration or the hour which was given to you. So I am pleading to you, dear friend, if you are a Christian, be ye good and be ye concentrated. Don't be a church goer. Be ye among the Christian, come out as a righteous man. Because Jesus Christ is not coming for the Christian. He's coming from those inside the Christianity. Those who stood as a righteous one, they are those that he is coming for them. And when I say the righteous one, it's come from the right thing, doing the right thing. When you do the right thing, you, tend, you come from, you graduate from the right thing to a righteous man. A right, righteousness comes from right, right thing, doing the right thing, that in total you become a right so let us learn something jesus said in according to job john chapter 9 verse 4 he said now it is day he must do the one who sent him the work because he said the day is the hour whereby we can work but the ninth hour we can work that is why i refer to you that not this day that jesus was talking about our day and night he was talking about alive and death that's what bible says in according to Deuteronomy chapter 30. When you go to the verse 15, Bible said God spoke through Moses and Moses let the Israelites know that God said, I have set death and life, good and bad before you. That is the choice. And he said, I urge you that you do the right thing, that you will take life so that you may live. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever we are doing in life, there is a time and a season in which we will leave everything behind. Therefore, I am pleading to us, let us live if we belong or we believe in God. Let us believe and walk according to the principles of God, which Jesus Christ said in the book, according to the Matthew, when you go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, Jesus, or let me pick you from Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 3. Then uh, I, I bring you to the verse 7 to verse 8. Bible declares that before Jesus, there was a man called John the Baptist. This is the one, a man who introduced Jesus Christ, or he made the introduction of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And Bible says at a point when John the Baptist saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees running to him for baptism, he made a word, he declared, he said unto them, he said, you've done very well that now you are running out of this evil world to save your soul. There 
Therefore, he said, the repentance in which the baptism which you are coming, that I should baptize you, which represent the repentance. He said, listen, don't come to repentance, just repent for one time. But he said, live in repentance and come out and bring a seed or a fruit out of your repentance. Let us see the new change of your, a new change of you. Let us not see the old you again, but let us see that you've become a born again. A born again simple means my old did are gone. I am in for a new life which comes with the death and the resurrection and the birth of Christ, that you have died with Christ and you resurrected with him. That is the meaning of dipping you into the water and coming out. That when you went in the water, it represents death. That's where they dip you under. So when you come out of it, meaning that you have come with a new leaf or a new life, that is it. So my dear friend, I'm just giving you time. Time isn't our own. Time has its own. It rule its own. A man has no power over time, but time has power over man. It is time that determines where we go. It is time that determines how good we can live. But I'm treating you and advising you. We can make the good use of it because Jesus has made it understood. The daytime being alive is a daytime. Being alive and being strong is a a daytime. So let us make good use of it that we, that are anything that we are doing, let's do it right. Friends and loved ones, it is our that we stop gossiping. It is our that we stop by biting. It is an hour, this is the time, the right time that you stop gossiping about your fellow Christian. It is time that as a Christian also, when you are living, you live a good example. You don't do things that will always make people talk about you. It is a time that you will do things if you people will talk about you. They talk about you in positive way. Remember that I've said unto you, according to Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15, Bible declares that death and life is set before us, which means good and bad is also before us. So when we choose to do the good thing, then we've chosen life. But when we chose to do the wrong thing, the bad thing, then we've chosen death. That is what Bible says in the book of John, the same John chapter 15. Jesus Christ said, I am the vine. He said, my father is a vine dresser or the gardener. And he said, when my father wasted time on you at a point, and he see no profit coming out from you, the branch, he said, my father will not waste his resources on you anymore, but he will rather cut you off. Do you cut you off from the, from the tree? And the branch will wither and you thrown into the fire. Let me just take you through once again to the book of Luke chapter 16. I am just making a point with you there. Bible declares that there were two men that came on this earth. One was called Lazarus, one was called a rich man. And Bible said Lazarus in, in course of the pains and whatever he passed through in life. Bible said Lazarus stood the test of time and he lived a righteous life or a godly life which pleases God that gave him the access unto the Abraham bosom. And Bible said there was also a man who also had the same access of life who heard the prophet preaching, who heard the men of God are speaking, and the Bible condemned adulteries, Bible condemned worshiping idols, Bible condemned a man leaving his wife and sticking to another wife. Bible declares a man is up to a one wife and a woman is up to one husband and a mother and a father are the responsible of the upbringing of their children. So when you read according to Proverbs Bible declares that he said, train up a child in which way he should go. So when the child grown, he will not depart or she will not depart from the path of the of God or the path of truth. So Bible declares that it is the duty of parents to bring up the children into the fear of God. And Bible has make it clear, men of God are keeping on saying, I am telling you what in those days, Lazarus and the rich man came in life and confronted. And Bible said, Lazarus hearing all these words, knowing that the men 
Spirit of God was warning them, letting them know that as we, our forefathers, that we came to meet them, they are dead and gone, so we will also die and go. By and by, as we are going to other people's funeral, so one day they will come onto our funeral. But the reason, the painful thing is that when the physical body is dead, the soul that lives in the body or the spirit that is in the body, which moves with the body, a time is coming that that soul or the spirit will stand before the throne of God and it will run accountability unto God. Therefore, whatever you are healing your body or soul to do, be careful and do the right thing. Now, if you are a married man, be ye concentrated and focused on your wife and your children and see to it that you will work hard as a man and make a provision for your wife and kids that dearly they will have something to eat and they will have something to put on and a place to lay their head. And they come to them and warn the woman and said to the woman and say, Women of God, listen, your husband in any man, in any man, in any situation, it doesn't matter the caliber or the caliber or the stature or whatever, or the, your you, the woman, your background, whatsoever. Your husband is biblically from God, your head, not your father, not your mother but your husband, your new family, or your new country, which represents you as the queen. The king is your husband. So be ye, show a divine, a faithful respect and humbleness unto your husband. Because anything wrong that you say to your husband, you are speaking to God because God is the one that ordained him. And whenever somebody is being ordained and by a, or a big authority, when you stand up against that person which was ordained, it is not the person that you stood against, but it is against the authority which ordained that person. Let me give an example. Police people, when you meet a policeman, and the policeman, if he is doing the duty as it requires, then you stand against him. Then you will not stand against the policeman because the policeman is not working for his own. He's working for the state. Therefore, on that cause, you stood against the state. Therefore, the state will deal with you. In the same manner it is. So every woman that is listening must listen and know this, that whenever you are dealing with your husband, or not only just your husband, but whenever you are dealing with a word called a man, be remembered, men, in, in quote, men are the God of each homes. So whenever you meet somebody's husband and you are dealing with them, deal with them that you've met God. And you are dealing with God. So don't just treat any man anyhow. And think that treating your husband well at home. It is what Bible requires from you. No, 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 no. The Bible requires that man represent. Husband represent man. A man represent. Stand for men. So whenever you meet a man anyway. And you are dealing with them. Deal with them in the godly manner. Knowing that even he could be your husband whatever. So see that this is the God I am dealing with. So deal with the situation very carefully and very well. As Christian women. I am giving you this advice. Because many people think or many people believe. Especially when we when Bible declares children obey your parents in the Lord. This is your this and that and that. People think obeying their mother and father is what the Bible thinking about the, their mother and father at home. But Bible declares anybody that can give birth unto you is a mother, is a father. So whenever you meet them, the respect shouldn't be, obedience shouldn't be in your house. It should be everywhere because when they see you doing something wrong and they advise you, then you take it. So I am advising and telling you that this is the hour that we need to do the right thing. Let us do what is right before the throne of grace. I am not saying we are all perfect. We have to be perfect. We need to try and come out from the things of this world. Let us not yield ourselves unto the things of this world. Let us live and come to in time that we need in every situation. We need to stand and do the pure thing that is right. Let us, as I said, let us come and do and live. Forgiveness is the greatest thing that God requires from us. 
It is an hour that we need to live in forgiveness. It is an hour that we need to live in love. It is an hour we need to live in unity. It is an hour or it is the right time that we need to forgive and forget. It is the right time that we need to give unto those who ask us. It is the right time that we need to bring those who have gone out of the grace back into the grace. It is a hard time and it is the right time that you that is stick to somebody's husband, you will just draw yourself out of somebody's husband. It is the right time that you that is stick or gum yourself or glue yourself onto somebody's wife it is the right time for you to draw yourself out it is the right time that a man that has not married to you you will let him be and you will be if he want to marry you let him go and see your parents and settle issues and marry you if the woman wants you to marry her it is the right time that you got the right thing to do that you see the parent and do what is rightful to the parent and take her home but you can't be a Christian and still have li living. You know, they say something. Uh, there's one English word I still don't understand it. You know, they call something boyfriend and girlfriend. A boyfriend and a girlfriend, to my understanding, when a woman is, a, when you become a friend to a woman, she's just a, she's a, a girl and it's a friend. But it is time that a boy lover and a girl lover, that is my understanding. This, so it is time that you don't give yourself unto a boy lover or a girl lover if the boy loves you then let him go and see your parent and do what is needful and it's the time that you the woman when you love the man it is the right thing to do that you also let him come and meet your parent and you both come together and do the right thing and take you home and stay as a husband and wife you can live with a man and say we are doing courtship you having sex and you've been living six months one year Two years, three years, two and a half. What is this? Why? Because you are waiting to prepare yourself to do wedding so that you will make it. All these things will, will take you to hell. Because wedding is not part of Christianity. Christianity and wedding has nothing in common. Christianity is apart. Wedding is apart. Marriage is not something about wedding. It is a matter of parents, both parents coming together, seeing that our daughter has brought in a man. And the man also parents will see that our son has introduced a lady to us. And now let's go and both sides meet together. And they are coming together. What it is, it is a matter of the, the lady's family releasing the woman to or the girl to go and stay with the man. And the man parents accepting the lady as their daughter in law with them and the guest lady and uh, the guest parent also accepting the man as their son in law and that is a matter that is what marriage is all about there is not this show and all the things about so my dear friends and loving christian that was the right this is the right time you want to get married please don't make this show and waste your time and waste all money and waste all this and believing in sin marriage in bible in godly way is simple it is about like i explained to you it is a both parents we don't need ankles we don't need the uh, uh, the head of the family what else whatever we only need the, the seed that brought these children out which is the mother and the father they are the head of this family grandparents all this they are all extended the most important is the father and the mother that is all matter so let's come out and do what is right for this is the right time that if you want to live and if you want your prayers to be answered if you want god the god that you call and the noise will be making if you want all this noise to be effective and the prayers and all things to be effective in our, in our life then this is the time that come out Leave that man who has not married you, but enjoying you as a married as a married woman. You, the woman, come out from this man who you have not married to, but you are enjoying yourself as a married woman with, and live as a single. This is the time that God will hear your prayers. It is not about sowing. It is not about giving to this. God doesn't need money to do anything to bless you. If God want to bless you, he don't need money to bless you. Who paid God money for him to wake up in the morning? Nobody. He wakes you up. He gives you breath. 
You don't pay money. So why would God need money before he blesses you? He don't need money. All that he needs from you is to do or live a right life. Come out from ungodly movement. Like I can say a man is not married to you. Sex is not in common with both of you. You are not the right woman to go and cook for him. He has the mother or has friends. He can go to a restaurant to buy food. Yeah, you are wife to be. Once you are not wife to be, you are not responsible for him to go and wash his clothes, to go and cook for him, to go and clean his house. This is not Christianity. It is not godly. Stay in your house. Let him find somebody to do the job for him. Don't do all these things and at a point when you are not married, then you become disappointed and started saying all sorts of things because of this many women, many young girls has gone out of the faith because they believe that man was a righteous man and how the man treated them because of that. Now they don't have even love for the things of God anymore and they don't want to go to church. My dear friends, I am warning you and advising you. This is the right time. If a man is not married to you, you are not responsible for his food, his washing of clothes, cleaning of house. He is responsible for his own. And if you are not married to a woman, it, they say equally you are not responsible for her education. You are not responsible for her upkeeping. You are not responsible for everything about anything about her. You are only responsible when she becomes yours and she is, is in your hands. Then you are the head of her. Then you have the right to take care of her and do everything necessary as a man must do. Many men, young boys now have fallen away and gone out of Christianity. And some are even consult medians and to a standard, even cursing the, the ladies because they spent on them and when the, the right time came, the ladies rejected them and married another man and all this. You see, all these things are not right thing to do. A right thing to do is a man, you see a woman, you want to marry, nothing stops you. Oh, the girl want to go to school and finish university before we marry. If you are a boyfriend, a boy lover and girl lover, and the girl can be going to school, you having sex. What is the difference of marriage? Marriage and boy, I do call it girl lover and boy lover. It is only one thing. Then when you marry, the woman will stay in your house all the, all, all the time. You see her every time, every day. That when you are not married, either she stays in the, the parents' house or somewhere that the time to time you meet yourself. But the thing that you have sex, you get angry and you plan on the future. So what is the difference? All these are the tricks or the enemy has brought in so when you go that's why when you go to according to Colossians chapter 2 Bible will tell you there's something called philosophy of man he it said it's a tradition of man that has found itself into Christianity not to uplift the Christians up but it's to destroy Christians their good goals and their destiny so be careful my dear friend if you not married to a woman I know some will be angry because they use the men to essay to break through if you want to marry the man there is nothing stops you if you have sex with him why you can't you stay in as a wife i am 20 years i'm still young then you don't need to do sex then you don't need somebody's son to take care of you then you must your parents must take care of you and you the young boy also you are not responsible to take care of somebody's daughter so when tomorrow she refuses to live to for you to marry her then tomorrow your christianity life will not sour that you will not regret that you will not fall out from christianity be careful because i said it to you that jesus Jesus said in according to John chapter number 9 verse 4 that he said he said it is their time that he must do the, the, the work of the father who sent him that is why he, he kept on saying he said ninth hour is coming that no man can work listen carefully when you make mistake there are some mistake when you make it you cannot recorrect it again because many people are spending their money on girls they told they are going to marry in the future and of which it not yields anything and because of that it has become pain and has caused many people to to draw out from the grace of God to come off to come off Christianity but let me warn and advise you 
if somebody causes you pain and because of the pain you leave Christianity because of you saw how the person was even if a pastor slept with you or pastor's wife was whatever I don't know I don't want to know because of that it causes you pain and it leaves something in you that you don't even belong or believe in Christianity anymore let me just remind and warn you God doesn't care about this all that he cares that a choice is set before you. You are the right person to make the right decision for yourself. It is not anybody's decision, like I keep saying. You cannot use me, don't come and worship my attitude outside and condemn Christianity. And because of me, you say that you are not serving God. When you think and do things like this, then your head, your brain is not functioning. Your brain, it be, it. It means I am the God of you, but may it God forbid for me to be God for you. Who am I that you will serve me? That because of me, I don't even know you and I don't even care about you. I am living my life and because of my life of which according to the book of Revelation chapter 20, Bible declares that there is a book called a book of life and bible declared that inside this book of life this there are names written in the book of life and each name comes with a reward and the reward is the work in which we use our body to do on earth and bible says whose name were not found in this book of life were thrown into the lake of fire of which there is no end unto it this cause or this reason you are going to condemnation because of me whoa somebody what is wrong with you you are not serving God or you are living your life anyhow because how you saw some men of God call themselves pastors are doing some call themselves apostles are doing because of that that's why you're living your Christian anyhow my dear friend and loved one this is the right time for you to do the right thing because i quoted for you according to luke chapter 16 verse 25 bible declares that when Lazarus was able to secure peace for he saw after death bible said there was another man called a right a rich man who died and did not secure peace for his soul and bible said this rich man at a point decided to seek grace so that he could turn things around. But Bible said, Abraham said unto him, says, son, you cannot turn things around anymore. The only time that you have the ability, the capability to turn things around is when you are alive. And he said, Lazarus saw the same thing. He no heard of what people were saying. It is an abomination for a woman to commit abortion. It is an abomination for a woman to sleep behind a man who has not married her. It is an abomination for a man to sleep with a woman whom she is, he is not married to. It is an abomination for a well lady to go and sleep with the pastor. It is an abomination to live in fornication. It is a sin for a man to go behind the wife and have concubines. And it is abomination, a sin for a married woman to be having an affair behind the husband. It is an abomination that parents a, a, a sin for parents to attend church and leave their children at home because the children feel they want to watch movie, they want to watch TV and the parents see that it is okay, but they are going to church. But Bible declares in the book of Proverbs that it is the parent's duty to bring up the children up in the fear of God. So when they grown, that they will not depart from the fear of God. It is a sin for us. So Lazarus heard all this. And he got Lazarus came to understand that it is a sin for him to sell at the market and hide the prices, manipulate the scales. It is a sin for him as a mechanic to manipulate things when people come to fix their vehicles. It is a sin as a seamstress when somebody comes to sew a cloth and the prices you will just divest part of the cloth. And also Lazarus saw all this. And he thought it's a sin to request sex from a young girl who has come to look for employment before employing the lady. And Bible said Lazarus saw all this and he decided not to leave 
in those ways. So he taught himself, I am living in this world, but I will come out of the world. That's why I told earlier, I said, inside Christianity, Jesus is not coming for Christians. He is coming for those in the midst of Christianity. They stood up and became righteous. These are those who are making it to heaven. That is why I keep saying Christianity is a group. Is, is a kingdom. But inside the kingdom, there are those who are going to be supreme. So Jesus or Christ is not coming for Christianity. He a Christian. He is coming for the righteous ones among the Christians. That is why he said the ninth hour nobody can work. Bible said when the rich man found himself in trouble, in Luke chapter 16, he was begging so that he could turn things around. But Bible said there, there was no way that he could turn things around. That is why Jesus made it declare in the book of John 9 4 he said the ninth hour nobody can work it simple means when death comes and reaches us there is nothing that we can correct it again therefore when we are alive now let us do what is right at being alive then let us do the right thing so that when divine call reaches us then we can also be part of those who enjoy in in paradise with Abraham this was the parable Jesus spoke. When he talked about the day and night, the day represents we now having the opportunity that if I am sleeping with somebody's wife, now I draw it so that I forgive myself. I redraw it. I stop it. If I'm smoking, I stop smoking. If I'm drinking, I stop drinking. If I'm a gossiper, I stop gossiping. If I'm somebody who likes fighting, causing trouble, I stop causing them. Because all this thing can be done in daytime, which means when you are alive. But when we live in sin and stop continuum, living in gossip, by biting, seeking for the things of this world, ignoring our soul, in our days now, many of our pastors, what do they do? It's not about God, it is about them. When they stood or they stand on the pulpit, it is not about telling us for us to know that dear friends and loved ones, each and every second minute that passing by, it is part of counting unto our judgment. So when God comes today, he don't care about your standard, neither which family you belong to. When God comes, it's all about your works. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 20, Bible says men, human beings, or the souls that die, that were judged. Bible said they receive reward according to their works. And Bible said they were condemned into condemnation according to their work. So whatever we are doing with our life, we are being preparing for heaven or hell. But now we don't hear. And even the men of God who speak like this, people don't like to listen to them. People want to hear the word of prophetic, the prophesies our. But let me just tell the children there and those who don't understand the, the word of God or dimension of God. God is the God of word. He lives in his words. He did not create this word by in his name. He said, my word have I lifted above my name. And he said, I created this word. Let's go to the book of Genesis. God was there, but not, his name did not make anything. His name did not create anything. Neither anything was made through his name. Everything that we could see, and even the judgment that is coming, will be done through words. God spoke, and it came to be. And through his spoken of word, he gave the ordinances, what must be doing, what we must be doing. Jesus Christ came. He healed people. Not the name Jesus healed people. It is the work that the words that he spoke that healed people. It is when he said, Come out, those words, the power, the righteousness in him gave that spirit the power to bring out the healing. So let me just tell you, those who go to church and especially those who attend pastors to their God, let me just warn you. Your pastor is a human being. He's a, he also go and stand before the throne of God and give account of his soul. And so if you are following pastors and they are fooling around, and because you call them Papa and Papa and Papa, let me tell you, there is no pastor that will take you to heaven. It is you that will take yourself to heaven. I keep on saying, Jesus Christ himself has no, the power Jesus has to take us to heaven. It is no force for him to pick us. It is we that must give him the chance. 
That's what Jesus said. He said, I am standing behind the door of your heart, knocking. So if you could open for me, I will come in. He doesn't, he doesn't come in by force. So let me just conclude and tell that Jesus Christ will not take you to heaven. It is you that will go to him. He has made the road for you. He said, according to Matthew chapter 13, he said, Two ways are there. One will lead to me. He said the narrow way will lead to me, which is righteousness, forgiveness, living and forgiven, giving, living outside the, the world of living outside this world, not yielding yourself unto the things of this world. I am not saying don't work. I'm not talking about it. But you will work, but you will not let the things of this world over, overshadow your soul. Everything that you are doing, you put God first. That you will not say, you because you go to church, you sing, you can dress you as a Christian anyhow, you can put on the things that worldly people are putting on, but because you go to church, because you sing, it is okay. No, you must be you must stand a different among them. That is what Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 16. Bible said when the Paul and the apostle went to Antioch, nobody went into the heart of the apostles and Paul to see that they have Christ in the heart. But Bible declares that when the people saw saw them and they saw the kind of dressing their women are putting on but they saw the kind of attitude now the women are portraying and the kind of lifestyle which the men they used to know them are now living and they say yes indeed we could see that these people are living in this world but yet they don't belong to us their attitude their clothing their dressing their movement everything is like equally to the man they had encountered Jesus that they have the mind of making it to heaven and this one, their ways represent heaven, and they call them Christian, meaning Christ-like or Christ DNA. So let me just advise us all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you do what is right. I am warning you one thing that I'm warning you. If you are a Christian that you are too much stick to past it, you are equally about to fail. I am not saying don't go close to men of God, but I'm advising you. Many of these men of God has no vision of making it to heaven. That is why Bible was already made a pro prophetic our condemnation upon the head. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, the verse 21 to 23, that he said a time is coming. When Bible says, no, not everybody coming, Lord, Lord shall enter. Bible says, at the point he said, many of them will say, we did prophecy. We did this. We did healing. We did this in your name. These are the men of God. Prophetic, whatever, whatever. But Bible says, God will declare to them, I never knew you. You will be shocked and confused. How God do not know somebody who did prophetic in his name? He said, the name of Jesus has been given unto us. So some of them, the meaning of this healing that they do, it is not naturally from the God that we serve the Lord Most High God. It is the deity they consulted, which they use the name Jesus. The name Jesus become only powerful when you yourself are living a righteous life. It is when the name of Jesus become useful. So you can call the name Jesus. It's the same like the Bible. Everybody can take the Bible. Even now I saw at a time when somebody was burning the Bible and some are tearing it. You know, it, it seemed like a book, but it become powerful. Whenever you are living by the word in, that is when the Bible becomes useful. But if the Bible, you are not living according to the principle of the Bible, the Bible becomes no useful unto you. That is why many people believe in that when they see men of God, they think they've met somebody that's supreme. And nowadays, they, they rather serve the men of God. Now, when a man of God goes wrong and you are correcting the man of God, the next thing you expect is that the church will stand against you. Instead of them seeing that this man is bringing shame into Christianity, he's bringing shame into Christ, he's disgracing Christianity. So for them to stand and even chastise their pastor to rebuke him or her, they would rather serve him as God. But later they said they are going to heaven. But they are not serving the God that leads to heaven. They are serving a man who leads to hell. But they think that they are going to heaven. Let me just conclude due to the time. Now, if you want to make it to heaven, if you want your name to be written in the book of life, there are things that you can do there are places you cannot go. There are some songs you can't sing. There are some 
things that you can do. A married woman that want to make to heaven will never, there is no way, will stand up and insult the head, which is the husband. And a man that really want to make it to heaven, there is no way he will stand up and insult the wife as a helper given to him by God. A man that want to make it to heaven, there is no way he will be a lazy man sticking in home, watching TV and saying, I am a university graduate and I'm waiting for promotion, I'm waiting for a, a job at office. If the office job hasn't come, there are not that jobs you can do to survive. A, girl, a man that want to make it to heaven, see to it that the wife and kids are in good condition. He worked tiredness. That Bible says in the book of Genesis, the Bible declares that by God said one to the book of Genesis chapter 2, the Bible said God said one to Adam. He said, he said, through sweat, you shall eat bread. And he said to the woman, was through pain, you shall bring forth a new soul. So a good man want to make to heaven will see to it that he equally respect the wife. And the woman that want to make it to heaven will especially travel not to Europe or not go to school, university, and finish university, and use according to the philosophy of man, which is the things of this word, which is the deception from the beginning of creation in the book of Genesis, which the serpent deceived the woman. The word there is called power. The woman needed power to be like God because the serpent said unto the woman, if you eat this food, you will equally be like God. You can command things to come. You will create your own word. You will rule everything that God is ruling. And Bible declares that the woman wanted to be like God. That is power. That is why I keep on telling our women that listen, this Christianity or this world, the, those going, those university institutions and especially the European institution, it was made purposely to deceive those core Christians. That is why they've given the power to the woman. But any wisdom, any wise woman who has the fear of God and have the mindset that her name must be written in the book of life will surely not hacking onto this authority, but she will rather think and know that, yes, Bible declares that I have right to all things, but not all things are lawful unto me. That, that according to the philosophy of this word, I am the head of my home and I have right over my husband, but where my eyes or my vision, my destiny, heaven where I am going, Bible declares unto me that my husband is the head. Therefore, Bible, conf Bible let me understand that I cannot serve two masters. Either I will hate one and love one. So when I yield to the things of this word, I'm ignoring God. Therefore, I will pay attention to God. And then you will just say unto God, Father, have your way. Then you will submit according to biblical way unto your husband. You are not a fool, but it is about you being the architect of your life. You are saving your life and you are building your destiny like Lazarus through and all angles made it through to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man, who made it to hell or made him to, into torment is not because he's a rich man. It's because he did not live according to what Bible required from him. It is a stand for you having the opportunity going to school, going to university, or being in Europe, and power has been given to you as a woman for you to rule your husband. Then you need to give the power back to the husband according to Bible way, then you know that my husband is the head. Though the opportunity has been presented unto me, even though I have become a minister, I am an MP, I'm a vice president or whatever, in course of work, I am boss at my working place. But the moment I'm at home, I am not the boss. I am a subordinate unto my husband. This is how the rich man is supposed to live his life. But no, this, let's take these two pictures. I will come again one time that we will study these two people, Lazarus and the rich man. We will make a good, uh, this, it will not be just a flipping program, but we will take time to deal on this right uh, rich man and Lazarus. Then we will just use it to examine our life. So I just tell you, Jesus has made understood. John chapter 9 verse 4. 
that the day and the night represent day is is alive night represent death that jesus said you cannot work anymore that's why i quoted for luke 16 verse 25 to, to join it for you to understand what happened to the right uh, the, the rich man and lazarus you know when lazarus died he was able to continue the joy because when he was alive he did what is right he he lived according to god's way he lived the things of god and when the rich man had the opportunity he also did not live for god but he lived for the according to the philosophy of man which gave him the power the access to do whatever he want according to matthew chapter 3 uh, matthew chapter 13 bible says broad is the way on the broad way you feel free to do whatever you want on the broad way you can consult a media and call yourself a pastor on the broad way you can say concussion onto people and call it is a healing power on the broad way you can say something to people and call it uh, anointed oil on the broad way you can say anything in the church to people for them to follow you just on the broad way you can use it but on the narrow way bible declares that there we don't say anything in the name of god the only thing that we do there is is calling the name of Jesus and anything concerning the name of Jesus there is no price tag on it everything is free and fair it's freely given and freely we don't charge if the person willingly want to do something for the church he or she does it healing we don't pay for healing there is nothing called anointed oil that you need to buy to get healing all these things are not godly these things when somebody want to make it to heaven he or she doesn't go to this way oh yeah it works no it that anointed oil god or jesus is not in anointing jesus is in our life he's in our righteousness ask yourself this question as we are about to close just to jump to the the tree session jesus the word of god is against sin it's against fornication against gossip malice slanders backbiting uh, you being somebody's side chick a man married man not being faithful to the wife a married woman not being faithful to the husband children are not obedient to their parents and parents are not taking care of their their children and many people don't have respect at our working places we do manipulate the system we are liars and not violence against all this so let's come to just a short time so you yourself you are with somebody's husband or a man it's not married to you have sex with you which god is against it and now you go to church and you buy anointed oil and the pastor will tell you god has blessed it and is going to work for you and the anointed which you are taking you are talking to somebody's husband home which is you are destroying somebody's home the bible declares in the book of exodus according to the ten commandment they said do not be envy of your your neighbor and neither do you have to steal now you are stealing somebody's property and do you the anointed on you if it works is is god that working through it no why because you are in sin and your soul has been captured by the devil so anything that they you use anointed it could work for you not because god is working for you is because the devil has blinded you and is deceiving and just wrap it nicely for you so by the time you will die it is when you meet it and see that the anointed oil and the prayers that these people were saying and the prophetic that they were prophesied upon you were not from god but it was from the devil but to just to come off right thing for you to think that your life is right with god but then it has been too late as the rich man had it in Luke 16 25. That is why Jesus said, As it is their time, let us do what is right. Let us come out from our ungodly ways and live godly life. You are a man of God, you are a human being. Be careful that you don't think that you already made it to heaven. Because I said it, Matthew chapter 7, 21, 23. Go and read and hear what Jesus said. And when I take you to the Ezekiel chapter 33, Bible also made a declaration there concerning the men of God. My dear friends and loved ones, I am ending here with you just in the next one minute hour. Remember that God doesn't care about where you're from. Hell and heaven, it is a choice. Where you will spend eternity, it is not somebody's decision for you. It is whatever you yield yourself for. It's showing where you are going. So if you want to be in church and still fool around, my only advice to you is that you will regret it one day. The things that you are fighting for, the fame and everything, you will leave them behind. Because how many people know you? 
when you travel to some places they don't even when you mention some name they don't know it so what are you killing yourself for live what is live a righteous life let god knows everything about you is pure so that when the trumpet of death sound in your heart you will not say if i would have known or should i know then it is referring to luke chapter 16 verse 25 concerning what happens to the rich man but then it is too late now it is time make good use of the day turn things around any sin at all being lesbian gay whatsoever it is all sin it is leading you to hell come out of them so that one day when you die or rapture happens your attending of church will not be of wasted but it will be profitable unto you may good may the good lord bless you may peace of god locate you if you want to see the things of god in your life a change may heaven come into your aid anybody that want a change to come from wrong life to a righteous life today i speak in the name of the lord jesus christ that may holy spirit give you the power and anybody that want to go out from it i warn you you are of your own don't go but if you go one day you regret of it because nobody brought you to this world you came by yourself even your mother and your father it is not them it is you when your father's sperms came the the children those who died inside the womb you are the one that wanted to come that's why you came so you of your own be careful and live to please yourself and god god bless you and may god be with us so we will meet again next week your oman don't go i summon with you meet you next week god bless you in jesus christ's name amen